All right, we are live for episode 13 of A Screw Loose. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about tough decisions, uh, whether you are a flute player or a flute repairer. Sometimes there are decisions to make that are not super simple. So we're going to walk through some of those scenarios tonight. We uh, pulled, we combed through our pile of questions to see what might fit the bill. And we had quite a few. So I think this is going to be a very full show. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we are a screw loose. Uh, we have Kimberly Durins of Kimberly Durins Woodwind Repair Incorporated on the west coast of Canada. <laughs> And Adam Petri of Petri Piccolo's in, well, near Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> no, I'm actually in Atlanta proper. Are you now? Oh, yeah. no. oh, oh congratulations. Yeah, like January, like, I'm at, at Atlanta proper now. So, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Okay, no longer improper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Me, probably improper. Uh, probably. All right. And Rachel <laughs> Simon, the flute mechanic in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, historic and beautiful. Although I've never been there, I've only seen the pictures. And myself, Sarah it's Stockton. Even better. Oh, her pictures are so pretty. In Middletown, Connecticut, which has it's a surprisingly so large number of excellent restaurants. Go figure. <laughs> Middletown. All right. <laughs> Actually, I think it's due to Wesleyan University being there. It kind of attracts all the mm, eclectic. I could answer places. that. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, Connecticut is like this big. Yeah, compared to most little. places. It's kind of yeah. little. Yeah, it is compared to little. Unless you're on 84 in rush hour, then it's like Texas. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it becomes a very big state. It's one county in Florida. I mean, it's yeah. like itty it's bitty. It's true. <laughs> well, <laughs> our usual disclaimers are that uh, we, our opinions are our own and not uh, those of anybody else's. And we reserve the right to disagree with one another. <laughs> <laughs> and what's our other one? Oh, don't, don't change don't. your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're definitely going to change our minds on anything. <laughs> and everything. Affirmative. Uh, my mind already. Yeah, because that's especially, you know, on, on a tough call show like this. Like, it, right, I've already decided this was not a good idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a bold topic. You know, guys, I'm just going to stop the no. <laughs> yeah, I orchestrated the show. I put the questions the together and I'm already like, mm -hmm. No. <laughs> well, it's a bold topic, a bold um, topic. And, and we can totally handle it right but yes we totally go where no flute tech has gone before right <laughs> it's true right we, exactly. we're up for the challenge um and there was one more disclaimer but i don't remember um, what it is so try everything at your own risk don't do that's the one. Did it at all. yeah that's that part one. That's especially for this one actually yeah just send it to your food tech. yeah yeah send it to your food tech. Um, <laughs> just okay. send it to your food tech. uh and if you're a flute tech send it to the maker <laughs> unless they're dead yes in case, figure something else out okay apparently <laughs> we're supposed to all visit doylestown yes please oh, okay. is, is that rachel's mom in the comments it, it is oh <laughs> yes please <laughs> As soon as this whole mess is over, you guys are coming oh, to I'm, Doylestown. No, I'm totally coming uh, to visit all of you as soon as this awesome. chaos is done. Okay. All right, guys. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Like when there's no special guests, we're just like, we're just going to yell about things. <laughs> about <her. laughs> it's our show and we um, can talk about what we want. Oh, however, speaking of guests, so I actually got to be a guest on someone else's podcast this week. Oh, that's um, right. I want to give a yeah. To Jean Paul Wright and his podcast called Talking Flutes. And uh, I got to be on an episode of Talking Flutes Extra, um, in which I discovered that I laugh way too much. Um, <laughs> and I've asked these three to punch me. <laughs> Go again. See, life is just hilarious. But anyway, um, so. Yeah, therefore, you should laugh. Oh my you goodness. You should laugh. Light, life is short and <sighs> stressful. You Seriously. should laugh. Anyway, so if you want to hear me laughing like a hyena on Talking Flutes, you should go listen to that. <laughs> However, I do highly recommend all of the other interviews that he's done. They are much better. So listen to all of those episodes. This show too. is great. Is <laughs> they are gripping was excellent. interviews. I listened, yes. I listened to it today. In fact, we ended up getting some people coming here tonight because of of your show. They they heard about us from you. Really? Go figure. Nice pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember I was at NFA Orlando. I was at NFA Orlando and I was just walking by and I had I had no idea who he was at the time. 
And I was just like, yeah, Trevor and James are great. Like, you know, at their price point, I was like, they're totally awesome. And he, and he recognized my name, my name badge, you know? Mm -hmm. And then like, he was like, do you want to do this? And then all of a sudden there was this microphone now. (laughs) And I am probably one of the least socially competent people on the planet. And I was like, sure. (laughs) 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 Like, it's fine. And he's so easy to talk to. He just makes it so easy. I love JP. He's he's awesome. He is. So yeah. shout out to him and his podcast. Go subscribe. Yes, follow them. Go yeah, follow yeah. us. It's follow good. each other. It's good. I just realized that I'm like gesturing with a razor blade. <laughs> hey, at least it was not in your hair. That is true. I found one in my shoe. In my shoe once. I went to go running one morning and I put on my shoes and I got like a quarter mile down the road and I was like, oh what my god thing in my <laughs> shoe and I took off my shoe and I pulled and it was one of those like thin flexy ones oh those are exciting to find yeah, in shoes. and it didn't cut me surprisingly so it, it must contoured been, because it's it, flexible yeah but that was a really yeah fun. but I would definitely rep- say don't try that one at home don't do yes no that's part of don't, my have, don't do that <laughs> no don't, don't uh, experiment with that one that was just luck <laughs> it was okay let's 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 get started shall we <laughs> focus right. people <laughs> so our first, we're gonna dive right in with i'm just going in the order that adam put these on the list and this one is a, like a very touchy one right off the bat thanks adam. all right um I, if we're gonna go for it let's just do it okay let's do it so all right <laughs> um <laughs> sorry um there's a Never mind, that's inappropriate. Okay, so <laughs> it made me think of a song. Um, so anyway, so there is, I'm trying to find my, my timer so that we don't go over time. So we're going to each take 30 seconds at the beginning of this. And here is the question. It comes from David, who is a tech. And David says, what criteria do you use when recommending to a client uh, that they start to think about replacing their flute? I just serviced a bandmate Gemeinhart M2 from the 70s, and as far as I can see, it has no issues other than one pad should be replaced. In fact, it plays and sounds great, better than my own more recent Gemeinhart. The thing is, her tech told her he didn't want to see it again, and she should start looking for a new flute, and I can't imagine why. It has no excessive wear, even the finish is pretty pristine for a plated flute, and the action is smooth and quiet. I could maybe understand recommending against an overhaul, which would cost more than the flute's worth, but it's still a great candidate for doing a CUA. Maybe one or two pads need to be changed, et cetera, at least as far as I can see. Okay, so I think the question here is, what do you do when you completely disagree with another technician? So I'm gonna (laughs) roll the screws on this one. Uh, And first is green, which is Rachel. Of course, that's first. And then that's fine. I got it. I got it (laughs) for Rachel. And then uh, Kim, oh, and shucks, I'm last. (laughs) Okay, so I'm second. Dang it. Yes, you are. Okay, Rachel, 30 seconds. Take it away. So, so the question is essentially, how, how do you know when to recommend to the customer to replace the flute instead of repair? Yes, especially okay. like, yeah, if somebody else said it needs replacing and you think it looks fine or vice versa. Oh, right, right. And it's, okay, second opinions. For me, my top consideration always pretty much almost always um is is what the player needs out of that flute what their expectations are for it and what they need their flute playing experience to be essentially what they do with it Mm -hmm. um that's the short answer perfect uh kim no adam Adam. yeah i'm i'm with rachel on this one first i try to assess like what their goals are with the instrument just to see is it financially prudent otherwise i try to find a tactful way around a very sticky subject um, but also if it comes down to just a blatant outright like disagreement with a, another technician, then what I do is I basically just try to present a case based on logic and evidence. And I do my best to show and display what I'm seeing and why I think this. So that way there can be an informed and an intelligent discussion between the two of us. Mm-hmm. And Kim? I'm sort of on the same page as everyone else. Uh, I, I like to assess where the person needs the instrument to go if they're at the beginning of their flute journey and they need something that's going to last them another 10 15 different years of like progressive playing that's a much different situation than you know another 10 years of casual i play on the weekends 
Um, if I disagree with another tech, I talk to them as a player and a technician to the person and find out what their needs are, what their goals are. And we go from there. And it's not that we ignore the other person's assessment. It's just that we focus on what the client needs and the other assessment is just an assessment. Yep, I agree. I like that. Um, I agree with everything this one said so far. <laughs> um, and I'm just gonna add that I think that this is an impossible question because none of us have seen the flute in question. So yeah. like for this particular case, like it's, it's so like if, if someone came to me and they were like, what do you think? You know, they told me the story. I'd be like, I think nothing. Like I haven't seen the flute. I, can't, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the player needs. I don't know what the first tech skills are. I don't know what your skills are. Like, I just, I don't know. And um, do we order free for all on this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I, I can I just finish my? Yeah. For yes. Sure. Is that okay. Okay. So um, I, 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 it kind of also comes down to um, there are different kinds of flute techs and there are, there are flute specialists and there are general band techs and there are flute techs who play with really light touches who normally work on really fancy flutes and there are flute techs who work you know in general repair of fleets and they press a little harder so like that particular m2 in this example like one person could play it and it would play fine and another person could play it and it might not get past b it, so okay that's that my piece yeah so <laughs> One thing that I am very upfront about when I ask, some, like when someone approaches me for repairs, um, one of the very first things that I ask about the instrument other than its age, I ask about its repair history, mm -hmm. just so that way I can see how recently was it serviced. But I'm also very upfront about, about asking who and where serviced it and how long ago was the service done. And it is not to pass judgment or to like evaluate or critique. It is to get myself in the mindset of, of what that person does in their day-to-day -day repair work. So like and, and it's also to get, sorry, I'm hearing like other noise in the background. Sorry, um, my, um, I was not, a phone went off. <laughs> Sarah so had a technical issue. Also, I had a technical okay. issue. Yeah, it's <laughs> to like, throw okay. it across the room. <laughs> yeah, it's for me it's to get an idea of okay, is this a general band tech that has six months at the bench sure. and they were otherwise totally green? They don't know anything versus mm -hmm. is this a high end technician that has 40 years at the bench and they're very old school or are they like 10 years, 12 years in the bench and they're more modern? It is just for me to understand where has this instrument been and what has its journey been this far just so that way I can see where are we? Mm -hmm. So that way you can have intelligent discussions because players shouldn't be able to make informed decisions. Yeah. And that's why I always say my business is a collaboration between artists and artisans. Absolutely. So we have, uh, that was our formal can free for all for that. Do we want to keep going? We can yes. keep, this is just such a fluid episode, the way I structured the questions. Yeah. I mean, are we going to get to more of these points later with other questions? Oh, too? we we can, we can. I just pulled up everything that was on this subject for us to just like, have a fluid conversation. Kim, do you want to? So, yeah, one of the things that I want to say, because I think it's really, really important, is that the other thing is there's, we sort of touched on this before, but there's multiple different types of like ways that technicians see instruments as well. So you may run into, there There tends to be uh, like two sort of groups and there's uh, technicians that see your instrument primarily as just a machine and it's very re replaceable. And when it wears out, you just get a new one because it's only worth $500. So you just go and buy a new one. And they tend to, and that's not a bad thing. It's just the way that they internalize their, their job and see repairs. And they tend not to have any emotional stuff to it. And it's just easier to just replace it with another student model instrument than it is to put the time into maintaining something that may or may not actually play as well as something you can get new. And then you have the other set of technicians that tend to, sort of we know all of their names know all of their quirks and we're much more attached to the holistic part of it um and there's like there's always going to be technicians that fall in between that as well so it is a spectrum 
but I think that you're more likely to find the, ah, just get rid of it and get a new one from a technician who um, sees it more as just like, well, you can get another one for $500. Why would you bother putting any money into this? Whereas you may get a very different approach from a technician. I do a lot of old flutes that may not be worth it, but they play great and the person's very comfortable on them and it does everything they need to have it do. And they're, they're retired. So it's not like they're ever kind of dreaming of like performance major sort of type thing. And for them, that's exactly the right flute because it is at this point an extension of their body. They've had it for 45 years. Mm-hmm. It's the only flute they want to play. <laughs> yep. So I think that, that that's a, another thing to sort of consider when you're thinking of what did the other tech say is they just may have a very different mindset about how repairs and maintenance work. Mm-hmm. I love that answer. That's awesome. That was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love all my flute babies. This is the problem. I'm way more emotionally attached than I should be to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. It's good. All right. Next, next up. Um, so uh yes this is this is this is often a situation that we face so um uh this person says i sent my flute in for a coa and i have eight torn pads is it better to have the tech do a coa or to just like do the whole thing and overhaul it like what is going to be a better use of my money so here we go first up is uh moi okay next up is Adam, uh, Kim, and Rachel, you're at the end. Okay, here we go. Um, I my rule of thumb is like if half the pads need to go, then just repad it or overhaul if it needs mechanical work because it is yes more expensive to do in that moment, but in the long run, so much less expensive because usually if like eight pads are going, that means that the rest of them are going to go next year. And by paying for like that much work two years in a row, you're going to spend far more than if you just do it all at once. That was my 30 seconds. Uh, Right, Uh, Adam. Yeah, I'm with you on this. If you are halfway through your pads, it means the rest will either go soon or it means there's an underlying issue. Mm -hmm. And I think it's better to just strip it down, address the underlying issue and then move on. Mm-hmm. Um, and once we have the free for all, I have an example of one time where I did break it up into two sessions. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mm-hmm. do agree. I think if it's eight, then you should just say, okay, let's strip it. Let's, let's start over. So I save money at the very end. Yep. Cool. Uh, Kim. Same thing. Um, if it's half pads, uh, y- you're going to save money just overhauling it in the long run. The other thing is that that at that point, you probably have some tone hole work that may need to be done, even if it's just cleaning up some like, you know, some burrs or some sharp things. Um, there's probably some key fitting that needs to be done. There's there's probably other reasons why you've torn eight pads since I saw you last year. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I would at that point recommend doing the overhaul because it lets you get a really cohesive like instrument back. Uh, yeah, I'm the last one. <laughs> Yay! Um, so the other consideration besides the value that we we're talking about is also the liability. It's a, it's more of a liability for both you and me if we're only replacing the eight pads that need to be replaced because if there's that much wear on it already and we're not refreshing the whole instrument, you've got old pads mixed with a bunch of new pads and then you might have old adjustment materials that are wanting to let go and if we replace those at the same time while doing the eight pad coa it's already practically a repad so it's um safer for everyone to just do it once and do it right agreed do we want to keep going on this adam you said you I mean, had an example I, I have a couple of things that i just want to bring up like if let's say for example the instrument is only one year old you just bought this instrument let's say it's a year and a half okay so it's a year and a half, so meaning you don't have any sort of dealer warranty on it, and it comes to me, and we have eight torn pads. Most of the time, it means all of those pads, like if my hand is the key cup, they're going to be torn around the edges, mm-hmm. meaning they're probably Straubinger or S2s or some sort of modern synthetic pad. In that instance, 
if it is something that is so young and so new, in those instances, I'll say, okay, this is a care issue. This is not knowing how to maintain the instrument. And that typically happens with younger players that are coming from step up instruments into their very first handmade instrument. Mm -hmm. And this is a learning curve. So in that instance, if it is such a new instrument and this is just the very first COA out of the gate and we're young, mm -hmm. that instance, I actually recommend saying, let's do the COA partial repack just because yeah. everything is of similar age. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, I did have, this was actually one of the very first instruments that I did once I started my own company, like I'm coming up on, I think, six years now. Um, it was a 14 karat gold Hanes, and the pads were only a couple of years old, but like 12 of them were torn. Yikes. Like so many were torn, and it was not expected. And in this instance, the player had some sort of questions about what they wanted in sound. And we ended up deciding to split an overhaul is what we did because mm -hmm. aside from a lot of pad tears, everything was in really great shape. So in that instance, I actually, he wanted to move over to gold pads. I wanted to move over the JS gold pads from Strawbinger. So I put in all the Strawbingers and then I replaced the adjustment materials. But, and we did like, we did that for like 1200. And then, um, which was my like repad at the time. And then we did the next year, the COA, I replaced everything else that was remaining. But that was a very specific circumstance just because he had a lot of pads, but everything else was in good shape. And the issue, I think it was kind of um, But anyway, there, there are, this is a moment where we have to exercise discretion. And, and we have to decide, okay, what is the best in the short term versus the long term? And mm -hmm. what is financially responsible? Because there are very few people that I know. I certainly don't know anyone that doesn't have any budget of any kind. I certainly don't because I am not in the top 0.1 of 1%, you know? Um, so that's kind of why it's important during these COAs that have lots of torn pads to be like, hey, can we, can we have a discussion about things? Um, just, to, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, my phone's buzzing. But yeah, it's important. <laughs> that have, no, it's important that we have these discussions just so that way we can make responsible decisions. You know, does that make sense? Because no one wants, like yeah. I certainly am not trying to get rich off of anybody because that well, means- Because none of us are. <laughs> none of us are. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, okay, the company bills at $100 an hour, but am I really billing $100 an hour? No, no I'm not. We're doing no, this because we noodles. want to help, so. I had ramen noodles for lunch. That probably says a lot, right? Right, so, like, I had a repair today that I'll probably talk about a little bit later this evening that I spent, like, five hours on this one thing, but I only charged one. I do that because, a lot. Like, it, you know, I don't that's, want to do it a lot, but it happens. Right, right. Um, I know we all have our questions up in front of us. Um, Rachel, do you have the next question? I do. Sarah said I could read it. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, like a I, permission I, slip. And I was like, oh my gosh, what's can happening? I, can I say can I say one thing before we move on to the next question? Of yeah. course. Of course, like I'm not um, the boss. <laughs> what, what, one, of, one of the things that I'd like to add is that if you if you do send your instrument in for a COA and it turns out it needs a lot more work, we can't always just expand your COA into an overhaul timeline wise. Uh, a COA and, a, and an overhaul are massively different timelines. Um, so there have been a number of situations what I that what I'll do personally is I'll call the client up and, and, and talk to them and say, I can kind of make it better and send it back to you. And then we can schedule uh, an, the overhaul for X amount, but it comes with like, it's the minimum amount of, of work to get it more playable than it currently is. Yeah. And then and then we, we schedule the overhaul. I mean, sometimes you luck out and I, I happen to have time, but most of us are really busy. So, right, right. so it, it is really, really important to kind of realize that if you haven't had a COA in say like two or three years and you're sending it in, it's really good to tell your tech, just tell them upfront, like I haven't actually had it in for three years and there probably might be like three or four pads. 
because we're all, we all want to make sure that we're scheduling you in the way that's going to work best for you. And we would rather tell you we need it for a week and a half up front than find out that we need it for a week and a half and you have a concert in four days because that's not a comfy thing for any of us to have to try to figure out how to map. So um, the more information we have when we're booking your appointment, the better in a lot of situations. Great. There, that's my story for, for that. <laughs> so there, wait, you're back. The Are the kids question? better now? What's the next oh. <laughs> the poor kids the poor kids they're with they're with the husband now so uh oh good okay. Okay. Rachel has our next question no oh, Sarah's back now she can do it oh you guys that was still the end of the previous one uh yeah we, 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 we were we were well, just that's a hefty the, topic the, it was hefty. we were discussing <laughs> the importance of 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 if a COA turns into an overhaul yes it, Ooh, your the next timeline one. also changes yes <laughs> immensely <laughs> immensely so it took it took a little while sorry it, it, i know i think that's a beautiful thing to bring up because it happens so much more often than people think and all the time, all the time. i'm still all the time. i'm still very much looking forward to going on my christmas holiday well yeah and that's the thing and, and did you because think? that didn't yeah. happen yet um no. because of that exact situation that yep. happened with four in a row clients mm -hmm. which i love them all dearly and i'm happy they love yeah. their instruments but i'm really hoping for Christmas in April yeah and if I mean but it's important <laughs> I think for people to understand that if we say I'm sorry I don't have time to do your overhaul we need to rebook for a month from now then it's because we we can't create 40 hours where we had booked eight <laughs> right, right. I have That's, tried many times it's not it magical <laughs> well we also want to do a nice job we don't want to like rush your overhaul and like slam it into the schedule we'd rather like schedule I am not going to do, your do your overhaul. Overhaul. it well, I'm like, not doing your overhaul I mean, in eight hours. This, I'm really this sorry. And right next to me, for example, actually came to me for an overhaul. <laughs> um, but it had been previously overhauled by somebody who um, didn't quite use the right materials or dimensions for many oh. of the items. Um, so okay. I had to special order uh, stabilizers to go under the pads because it's a vintage handmade flute which means that it is not built precisely it is a very yeah. nice flute it is completely worth doing all of this work yeah. to. but technology has come a very long way since 1970 right so we're able to solder keys together much straighter now than we could <laughs> I, call them, I call them boutique flutes because you know they're no matter how many of yeah. them they made, they made they're all kind of like one-offs. Everyone is completely <laughs> different, right? And so I have had to use three different thicknesses of stabilizers in these key cups. Like the pad protrusions are hugely different on every single key where like, so I've had to modify the washers. I've had to modify the spud heights. I've had to modify, I mean, just everything is different. And when I'm done with it, it's gonna be very stable, but I had to wait for those extra supplies and it's going to take longer than a normal overhaul. So fortunately, the owner totally gets it <laughs> and is on board with that. But I, this was not a one week turnaround, you know, like by the time I right. got all the special supplies I needed. And, and we, we hate yeah. having to call and say something's delayed because yes. yeah. the problem is, is we end up in the middle of that. And I think yeah. that most, most people understand, right. but the, the trickiest part is when we contact our suppliers and they're delayed yeah. and then we're delayed and right. then you're delayed and all we have for the information is it's on its way, which we realize is extra unhelpful for our clients. Exactly. And right. yet right. it's all the information we right. have. But then too, it's like, I still oh, had tricky. all the COAs I had booked this week. They didn't yeah. move. So I'm right. trying to do this overhaul in the middle of an already full week. Right. So it's like, it just has this cascade effect that is, is very difficult to stay on top of. Right. Like I have a, a vintage yeah. wood flute that's here for a complete overhaul, including like an updating of the, the key padding system, because mm -hmm. it had like instead of uh, a spud oh, with does it have the flying that, saucers? It, it had it had a, a threaded washer, a, a threaded post, and you mm. screw the washer down on, so it means nothing is consistent. And this player is wanting consistency of service moving forward. And I said, okay, then that means we need to modernize it just mm. slightly. And I ordered some of these parts a month ago because the pads that were mm -hmm. available then, you know, the pads were the felt was treated with mercury we don't have that anymore and they were extremely thin because it also, poisoned us but <laughs> they, were, they were extremely thin but also very fluffy 
So I had to like custom order some pads and they just came in today. And it arrived about a month ago yeah. and that's, that's yeah. out of my control. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's juggling. We try our best. Hard. We do. We you do. know, juggling is Sometimes hard. Sometimes it's like, yeah. I, I, I love it when, um, when uh, people try to be helpful and they like try to help me like fix my schedule. And I'm like. <laughs> Well, I, and you I know what the funny thing is? I we like do that to each other too. Well, right. We try to help each other out and we're like, it's just not going to happen. Well, it's just I mean, not going to happen. There are tricks. Like I purposely under schedule myself by a lot now because I know that this Man. happens. And I know that Me too. when like, I, I, I have not ever been short of work since I started yeah. doing that. I so. always think I'm way under booking and I've never been just like, oh, there's no flips here. <laughs> exactly. It's never happened. It's never happened. <laughs> So, so yeah, I'm give yourself right extra here. time to yeah. anyway. Yeah, my, my favorite, you my on. favorite current trick, my favorite current trick is that these guys will schedule themselves in my appointment. Yes, I, I, oh, that's I with have awesome, a, amazing I, things. You, like yeah, some so kind how of like my, contra base. My, it's my it? it's my twenty four karat gold sub contra. Yeah, right. how's how's that going? Right. It's the one that you wanted the the custom gold Schmidt pads in. Right? Yes, please. Okay, yes. with the sapphire insert. No ruby. Oh shoot! You, okay. No. Oh my God, Kim. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we we laugh about Send it, it but back. the thing is, it it's actually helpful because we're so busy that our brains just log as an appointment until we look at it and we're like, "What? I have a, I have a day to get caught up." Yay! Yep. Anyway, right, it's my favorite thing. It's awesome. okay. Moving oh, on. I booked something with some of you all. It was an eBay find. It was like something. That was me. I got a piccolo from you. Oh. <laughs> What was it? I don't even remember. Was it was a carbon color? fiber, some kind of carbon fiber thing. Oh yeah, that... that's right. It's made out of carbon fiber. I'm like, that thing's woven together. I don't want to seal up those leaks. That can be your problem. <laughs> right. It's a coping strategy and, and it makes us smile, which is good. Anyway, moving yeah. on. All right, moving on. Um, okay. <laughs> Adam has flagged this danger. <laughs> <laughs> danger, danger, will danger. Okay, so uh, Denise asks. Um, well, I have some questions. Should I polish my own flute or not polish my own flute? Is there such a thing as too much manual polishing of our own flutes? Um, is it okay if I use an eyeglass cloth, or I've got a whole bunch of varying thicknesses and smoothnesses of eyeglass microfiber? Or what do you think of a T-shirt um, for cleaning the body after all the keys are removed? I'm assuming they know how to remove their keys anyway um on a different note i feel like i ought to be able to get bj long's pipe cleaners in smoke shops i was told that i should get all the fluff out what household items can i use to add a blast of air um cold setting on a hair dryer or something else okay 30 seconds people 30 seconds here well, we go a lot there a there's lot a lot there. pack um Oh gosh, I'm first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. Uh, green, Rachel. All right. Okay, I like this one. <laughs> it's a fun one. I like this uh, one too. Kim I think. And Adam, that Thanks. means you're last. Okay. Whew, 30 seconds. Here I go. All right. Polish or not polish? I generally say don't polish if you have to just like wipe the length of the body away from the keys and maybe the tops of the keys gently with a microfiber. Eyeglass cloth is fine. As far as I know, I haven't seen every eyeglass cloth out there. Uh, don't remove your keys unless you've been trained by somebody. Um, and not like a weekend cleaners, course. Again, uh, pipe cleaners, I assume you're taking your keys off. I feel like maybe this is someone who should take a, a flute repair class. Um, yeah. And yes. no, a hair dryer is not good for blowing fluff out. Okay, 30 seconds, Rachel. Yeah, I mean, like my face works better for that than a hair dryer where like just like yeah. you know, just a little bit of. But <clears throat> anyways, I like I love microfiber for wiping down flutes, and I like the um. Oh, I have a Miyazawa example they sent me. It's the best cloth I ever. Have one it of them is. Too. It's, the, it's huge. <laughs> it's, it is. Wait a minute. Okay. How do I know? So, I haven't opened it. I didn't realize it was that oh, big. It's enormous. I'm not this small. It's gorgeous. <laughs> So this reminds me of the eyeglass cloth. And the reason I like the eyeglass cloth is because it's microfiber, which is great for picking up contaminants from the surface without rubbing them into the surface. And it's good for grabbing oils. But also some of the microfibers are really thick and floopy and it's a lot harder to control getting it away from the pads. You know, like it's harder to control where you're putting the cloth. So, so if you can get a, something really thin and like wrap around your finger, like eyeglass cloth. Yeah, if you're gonna wipe off your flute, that's how I would do it. 
Hey, Adam, nice shirt. Yeah. So, <laughs> the, sorry, I'm going to use my 30 seconds. I'll talk about my shirt and then I'll use this. Anyway, um, I bought this shirt from Sarah a couple years ago, and it's one of my favorite work shirts. Um, and it's just, it's so comfortable that it's actually not to be sad, but it was the shirt that I chose to wear the day that I had to put down my feline just because on one hand it was just so comforting like in terms of like the physical thing of it but I was like this is a friend that knows him oh like she would be sad and she would give me hugs and so this was the Aww. shirt that I wore to put down one of my fur babies that Cass I miss very much Cass 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 was he was such a sweet sweet um smoky gray Persian kitty so um but anyway sweet. that was that was that um <laughs> Uh, to put it very quickly, if you're asking this question, um, in addition to the things that everyone says here, I actually recommend approaching a shop that does like really good woodwind repair work near you and saying, hey, can I pay a few hours of bench time just to mm -hmm. shadow someone mm -hmm. and to ask them questions, just pick their brain and take notes, okay? Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Another thing is that um, this is, I used to work for Carolyn Nussbaum um, and she, she actually makes these like ultra suede, like anti-tarnish cloths. Um, and it's made out of literally ultra suede. It's double-sided. Um, I've started purchasing it just so that way I can send out some like untreated ones with piccolos that I sell. Um, but she has a way of treating them so it helps prevent tarnish and it like changes the pH balance on the surface of the instrument. So in addition to like the microfiber, that's actually a really cool product that she sells. Um, we should and they do a beautiful job. Cool, so. we should move on to Kim. I didn't yeah, start. Yeah, all right, and then we can free um, <laughs> I have, is, this is like, it's a Beaumont one and, and it lives in the shop because it, it was the one that I couldn't sell. Um, it's 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 so pretty though. It is really, I really pretty, but it is, it is, it is a little bit overly colorful. So it's great because it doesn't get lost. I love the Beaumont ones. The only thing I will say about the eyeglass cloths is the little square ones can flip underneath your keys and get caught in things. So I actually don't like them because they're too small to clean mm -hmm. out the inside of your flute with because they don't get on the edges and they're too tiny to like, they can be a little bit dangerous. So in a pinch, yes, but these are so inexpensive <laughs> that is, I, I would still recommend just getting a specific cloth that is yeah. for that. Um, for, I wouldn't take your flute apart unless you've actually taken a one-on-one, -on -one, like an extended class, not like a weekend class or an, even an over like online class about how to take your instrument apart. The reality is, is that if you're using like getting your flute down to the point where you're using fuzzy things um, like pipe cleaners. The problem is, is that if you cause a problem, the problem you can cause can be so significant that you cannot fix it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so agreed. I would really, really encourage anybody who wants to do it for fun to buy something really inexpensive for $25 and, and then like take some classes and courses and stuff like that. But I, I agree. it's more involved than people hope it would be. Yes. I, I also want to add about the whole um, cleaning issue. Like, so I had someone today uh, who uh, had a significantly tarnished flute and they were wondering uh, what they could do to prevent that tarnish. And I could tell by looking at the tarnish that this person just had reactive skin and mm -hmm. there's no amount of polishing that is going to like I used my silver polish on that tarnish and it, for a COA I couldn't get it off like I, I just yeah. could not safely get remove it um, so there are some types of tarnish that you just have to learn how to live with and if you're someone who turns your keys black you just have to live with it like there's just no safe way to, to get rid of that in between like overhauls or like major, you know, um, 
there's two other kinds of tarnish. One is atmospheric tarnish, and that's a light yellowish golden brown that you can basically just like wipe off with your finger. That's the kind that you can safely get with, with a cloth. The other kind is that purplish hazy white stuff that comes from a bad case and that yeah. you cannot remove really either um, without uh, having the special tools of a tech. So it, most of the time, unless it's that light yellow brown stuff that you can literally just wipe with a finger, it, it you, you're wiping your oils off of the flute, but you're not going to really remove any tarnish with, with a Beaumont cloth oh, or an eyeglass cloth. It's, mm -mm. Yeah. One one thing I have to add to that though is for people that do have really aggressive tarnish, and mm -hmm. it's just because I worked for this company and I know how the cloth works and I know how the treatment works. Is the, mm -hmm. the anti tarnish ultra suede cloths that Carolyn Nussbaum sells? Mm -hmm. Those are actually really great at preventing tarnish from getting worse. Mm -hmm. Um, just because of how they are treated, they change the pH balance on the surface of the material. So it sort of either neutralizes or if you have very mild skin, skin chemistry, it can very slowly like reverse it, but it is it's very know. subtle. Um, but those, as long as you do not wash that cloth, um, that's a great product that she sells that um, it actually works. How did I not know about there, that? There are also yeah, some... Protective. It works really well. I um, saw there are also some, some like soaps and um, hand wipes. If you contact like a dermatologist or an endocrinologist, um, they have pH balancing soaps and stuff. They don't last yeah. for a really long yeah. time. But the idea is that, is that you could wash your hands with it. It's like a liquid pump soap that you, you wash your hands really, really well with right before you play and it alters the pH temporarily of your skin. Same thing with the wipes, if you can't get to like soap and water. Um, it, it's safe through the instrument, but it alters your, your hand chemistry for a while, long enough that, that you could put in like a full concert or a, a really good rehearsal. Um, so those are other options and those would be something that you would talk to your doctor about or a pharmacist about. They may be over the counter, I'm not really sure, but I know they exist, so. Cool. Let's, uh, let's keep going. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. So um, Matt uh, is a tech and Matt, and we kind of touched on this a little bit before, but we'll, we can gloss over it again. Um, Matt says a repair comes in and it has a previous repair that was done poorly, a fairly serious issue. How do I navigate this with the customer and how do I determine whether to fix it myself or to send it to someone more experienced um, or how do I know if it's something that a manufacturer will want to deal with? Um, so a lot of good questions in there. Uh, we're going to go with Kim. Oh, good. This is one Kim's of my favorite questions. Always said this. Yeah. Okay. Then Adam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rachel and then moi. All right. Kim, take it away. Um, for me, if I see a lot of this. Um, I tend to be really upfront with without assigning blame um, because the reality is, is that often people have seen multiple texts in the past and if you have an older instrument the reality is that things are different in the factory that when they were made back when versus now so it's, it's hard to know whether it's a whether it's a problem or not so I focus on fixing it when do you call the manufacturer I have them all on speed dial um, if there's a question in my mind, I call the manufacturer. Cool. Um, uh, Adam. Um, I'm unique in this perspective just because I am actually physically arranged as a manufacturer um, of Piccolo. So I have a lot more tooling and mm -hmm. skill sets beyond repairs. Um, but for me, the question with this is if I see something that is not ideal, my question is, Okay, what is the situation is number one. And two, what is the most elegant solution to bring us back to quote, target? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm already out of my time. But um, anyway, I, I try to balance those things and I'll get back during the general cool. chat on that. But yeah, what's the situation? What's the most elegant solution? All right, Rachel. Um, let's see, for that one, I tend to just focus on describing what I'm seeing, just facts, 
aspects of how this fluid is and what is up with it and what that means and how it gets fixed. Uh, because I, there's often so much history that it maybe it's even hard to understand if, you know, at, from, from the player's perspective, like it's hard to know when this happened and why, because you know, you're not the one doing the work. So I'm just focusing on the facts in those situations. Yep. Um, so as last place person, I can just say, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, same thing. Like I, I, I love making videos for my clients actually. <laughs> Um, where I talk through and I just say here in this key, I see this, this is not ideal because X, Y, Z, and then they can see what I'm talking about. And it's so incredibly helpful, especially for like someone who doesn't know anything about flute repair or it, it, the worst thing for somebody to hear is someone say, you need an overhaul. And they go, well, I just had an overhaul last year, right? They mm -hmm. don't understand. Like, they're like, who is this money grubbing tech who just wants to like take all of my, you know, hard earned, like it's not the case. So telling people why is good. All right, free for all. Um. I actually had a repair this week where I had to exercise a lot of judgment on this. Um, and it was, it was a 20 plus year old wood flute and the foot joint was wiggling very badly. And I looked at it and I thought, well, this was made strangely. And then I really looked at it and it turns out that I realized there had been a repair done in the past where on wood flutes, foot joint tenons have a little metal ring at the very end and it was missing. And someone at some point had built up wood dust and glue and turned it on a lathe as like a temporary ring. And it was just chipping and it just, it wasn't holding up. And I had to figure out, okay, well, this is a significant issue because the wood there is so thin that it's extremely vulnerable. And it would the foot joint was fitting so loosely like I could actually like if the two joints were like this I could bend it like a whole 20 degrees in any yeah. direction because yeah. it was it was so like tapered you know um and I was like okay well I can't perform a satisfactory COA without addressing this issue and I thought well okay we can either send it back to, to the maker and have an extra ring put on, but what will that actually cost? And is it worth that cost versus what are my skill sets? And that is something that we each have to be very honest about ourselves with is, okay, who am I? What is my background? Who is my customer base? What is my equipment? And what's realistic? You know. It doesn't do any technician any good to like quote be a hero mm -mm. and go way out of our way because one we might mess it up and then we're the we're the villain right and two it's okay if it spent takes us five hours to do it but it takes the manufacturer 30 minutes because mm -hmm. they don't yeah. have <laughs> exactly right so, so i figured out okay well the manufacturer can likely pop on the part, but how much will round trip shipping cost versus what will it cost me to make a new ring? And I realized, well, maybe an hour, hour and a half. That's less than round trip shipping to the manufacturer plus the COA. So I was like, okay, I presented it to them and said, this is the issue. This is why the foot joint wobbles so badly. It was a well-intentioned repair. It was performed well at the time. Time, and it was mm -hmm. um, but I said but that was a little while ago and it's just worn down and now it's time for something a little more permanent so this is what I can do mm -hmm. and that was a discretionary judgment that the person asked me on one day hey what's the estimate on the instrument and I waited another like 36 hours before I got back to them even though they could see I'd seen the message and it was because I spent that time thinking about the options mm -hmm. and it wasn't because I was avoiding them <laughs> I do I do that a lot too I like sit there and I'm like really thinking yeah, if, if, was, if people send us emails and we don't reply it's often because we're thinking really hard about how to take yeah, care of the it was, problem I already, the best yeah. I already saw it was a very straightforward job except one thing yeah yeah so I think this is like uh 
I'll give a few examples of things that I have sent to the manufacturer because I didn't want to do it yeah. or, or that I will be mm -hmm. sending. So this past week I had a brand in, in for a COA and has an extremely worn B flat key. Um, like the, the tubing needs to be replaced or, or a new steel needs to be made and the other key is reamed. Brandon is going to be able to do that much more precisely than I will. <laughs> that's literally what they do. So that's not something like I can, yes, I can replace a steel on most flutes. Yes. Like uh, I don't have the soldering equipment here to replace. A they have a jig. They go like this they and it's done. A, right. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> it's like I'm not going to be that hero and say like, well, I've done it in the past. That's just silly. Like that's the thing for Brandon to do. I had a yeah. Burkhart come in that um, had been dropped and the whole body was like ovaled Rich. from the foot tendon up to around F. Okay, do I have mandrels? Like, can I make something round again? Yes, but that's a handmade Burkhart. Like Burkhart has all the right stuff to do that. If it was a student Armstrong, heck yes. I would go to town on that thing and I would make it play and it would be beautiful. But I, Burkhart has the Burkhart mandrel. They do. <laughs> and so that's when I go, Daniel, <laughs> I'm sending you a flute. <laughs> Things for you. Exactly. And like another another Burkhart uh, example, um, I had a, a tenon socket come loose and I didn't know how that was attached. And some of them you can just detach and you can re-glue it on like Yamaha. That's a pretty common repair. But I didn't know exactly like would I break something if I did that. So again, hmm. Send that to Burkhart. Yep. Like it's just yep. easier. They can do it in ha a third of the time that I would spend thinking about whether I should do it or not. <laughs> so my my one for from today actually it just mm. arrived back from Haynes. Thank you, Haynes. Um, <laughs> to all the lovely people at Haynes that took care of this. I have a client with a really, really, really old Haynes, and they wanted the the F sharp key actually disintegrated. <laughs> Which was which, uh, which I thought was was horrifying when it happened because it it just like fell apart and I called the client and I said this piece kind of like disintegrated, um, and they went oh yeah another one has already done that before and it got fixed it's okay, and, which was great because I was I, like my heart was in my that's throat a great attitude going, I, and so they're like no it's okay it's a really for attitude <laughs> a for thank you for making my life easier so I called up Haynes I explained it I said you know I could probably like redo it here but the reality is you know, it's kind of like, it's old, what kind of solder should I use? And, and they very wisely said, we actually don't know, it's so old, it could be many different options. So like the reality is, is that it's safer to just send it here and we'll take care of it because then whatever we find, we can fix. And so it's never a bad thing to talk to the manufacturers. Invest your, invest is text. Agreed. Definitely invest effort in, in getting to know the manufacturers and making it and, and becoming friends with them and having open dialogues with them because the more we all work together, the better it works for everybody. And right. it took me five minutes to put it in a box. And that was the amount of concern I had to put into it. And I knew they were going to take care of it and send it back mm -hmm. instead of like six hours here panicking on what temperature of solder might happen and what happens if something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. Make sure to build relation. If you are a technician, build relationships with the manufacturers in the business. Because here's the thing: we all have each other on speed dial. We do literally. Like, like I can text almost anybody I want at any manufacturer, like that, and it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. And the people there, because we're all friends, we want each other to be successful. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that the instruments are done to their best degree. And it means that, okay, sometimes it says, okay, hey, let me call up so-and-so. And it's, I have these skills. Is this appropriate? Or is there something that I cannot tell or that I don't know? Yep. That you would rather I send it back. Because sometimes they're like, oh, yeah, that's totally fine. And then we'll pay you for the thing because it's under warranty. Mm -hmm. like, I get that kind of thing all the time. Right. But every now and then they'll be like, yeah, that's a very, very special solder joint mm -hmm. and it requires A, B, C, D. Send it back to us and we'll pay for it mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about it. Or it'll be like, okay, yeah, they messed this up, but it's one, two, three, it'll cost X amount of dollars. Mm -hmm. 
and it will be done correctly the first time without somebody else in the middle trying their best to be the hero, as I talked about earlier, and they end up causing permanent damage. And that's one of those moments where you have to evaluate who are you, what is your background, what are your skills, mm -hmm. what are your resources? And what's oh. best for the flute? Like what is Agreed. best for that flute or today today alone I have talked to Altus Powell Haynes and and Burkhart. Um and uh, today. To, to, that's that's a, that's my speed dial for today. Right. And here, um, <laughs> and that's normal for us. One of my things was resources. Yeah. Resources are not always physical, tangible objects. Many times they're people. We need because, our people. Like, we make I us know better. I'm ever in doubt. I get on like our text chat thing <laughs> and I talk to these three ladies. I'm like, holy crap. What do you all think this is? Mm -hmm. What do you think I need to do? Yep. We do and, this all day to each and other. And honestly, like, <laughs> really commercial. that's what we're trying to do with our patreon <laughs> it, is. it is is to create that community and that network of techs who know each other who are comfortable talking to the manufacturers who know that if they have a question they've got you know i think we have like 35 tech patrons at this point yeah. like that is a big Thanks, wonderful guys. network yes Thank it's, it's also patrons. very different you. than it has been in the past like this is a very different scenario that's been created and I'm so proud of that to be part of it because it's so nice to have a group of techs that like want to build each other up and make each other stronger and make each other able to do more things and not be afraid to say nope this isn't something that it like that it takes all of that some techs felt uh, I think like feel embarrassed to say no I can't do something and hopefully we're creating a network of people who right. know more including when it's a better option to yes. say right they're going to do it over there yes. <laughs> and, and that's like i'm always super transparent like with my clients when i need to send something to somebody else because for me i would rather them know that i have a well-connected network of experts who have my back than pretend that i'm some sort of like you know, perfect, you know what I mean? Like nobody is doing this by themselves. Like if no one knows everything, we, we, no we need a team. Everything. If, any, if yeah. anybody says that they don't have a team, e either they're lying and they're, and then they're, or they're lying or, 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 they or they don't they're dangerous. have a team or they, or they don't have a team and they're dangerous. That's terrifying. Um, have a team, always have a team. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We're already at six. Or well, what time is it for you guys? It's six o'clock here. Right? It is, it's, yes, six o'clock somewhere. It's six o'clock there. It's nine o'clock here. So that was actually a really good place to wrap things up. I think this was a uh, such a good show. Thank you, Adam, for for the idea and consolidating those questions. Yeah. Out. Well, I was just I was just scrolling through our like massive like list list of things of questions and i just realized okay what are the ones that we have not answered and the thing they all had in common was mm -hmm. discretion yeah and it's because truth be told technicians we are not gods we are mortal we are human beings we have limited resources and limited knowledge and the best we can do is to use our best judgment and to use discretion and it's it's an art form and it's also an an exercise in humility yes absolutely and i thought that was you know a lot of technicians when we discuss things publicly with players we dodge that whole subject <laughs> we do everything i we can to avoid this thing of i don't know mm -hmm. And or, I think or it depends. <laughs> or yes, it depends. And I'm thinking, well, like, okay, well, that doesn't do anyone any good. And we end up having to have a lot more uncomfortable conversations than we expect to have or that we want to have. And at the end of the day, I think it was it was important for us to at least address saying, hey, we're human. We don't know all of the answers, but we might have suspicions. <laughs> or we don't know all the answers, friends. but we have speed dial. We have friends. Right? And we, have, <laughs> we have friends, different experiences and different expertise. Mm -hmm. So yes. it's an opportunity to say, hey, we are people and our players are people and we are all imperfect. 
Yeah, and and we all want the same thing. We all exactly. want the best possible result for that particular exactly. instrument. Exactly. You took yeah. the words find, out Find of a mind. tech who thinks that way and yeah. you'll never go wrong. Exactly. Find, find yourself a tech who cares a lot and wants the best for you and wants the best for your instrument mm -hmm. and is probably eating ramen noodles. Exactly. <laughs> because of it. Yes. If, and I, uh, the truth the labor is, of is love. The, the, tech, the techs who care the most are usually like us in the tiniest of spaces trying to just you know do the best and 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 profit isn't even like on our minds most of the time as long as i can pay my bills just barely i'm happy because mm -hmm. i want to do the best for my clients and their flutes yes and i know that each uh the the three of us or the four of us all feel the same way about that we like so. all right so anyway, we got to run. Everybody. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank um, you. As always, we're thrilled to have, you know, people who care about this with us and it's wonderful to have your support. So um, next week we have our player chat, right? Yay. Yeah. Yes. This is a player is chat. Week? Oh my goodness. It is. Well, yes. so if March. you are yeah. a player and you want to like, <laughs> talk with us for directly, uh, join our Patreon or if you're already a patron, we'll see you next week. Um, it's always a fun time we talk about whatever is on players minds sometimes we come in with a topic sometimes we just free for all um, but it's a wonderful chance to just connect with people and uh, have direct conversations so that is next we week. also have our wednesday work along yes and yes. which we never really announced but 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 yeah. we have a wednesday our wednesday work work along for our player tech Yes, for our techs. Um, so basically, we just for two hours, we all hop on Zoom, we have no topics. And we just say, hey, what's on your bench? Hey, what's on your bench? And you usually get like 10 to 15 we people showing create up. that really cool yeah. community. It's and that's why we do it is yes. it's, it's to create community. Yes. So, so if, you're, anyway. if you're a technician, and you're feeling lonely, that's another reason to join. <laughs> and we'll see you on the first Wednesday. It's great fun. Because as you can yeah. see, the four of us, we all the four of us, we all work alone mm -hmm. we, do we, though? Started, we work but... together though I mean, we work uh, together all day alone all day <laughs> like, but that's how yeah, this whole thing cool. started it is. this whole thing started because sarah and rachel got to talking about hey we all talk to each other all day every day <laughs> and then we even get on zoom and we're like because covid confinement here we are and then we were it's like true. Hey, we could do a thing i'd like to listen to us talk <laughs> we can do a thing. we're like oh my goodness sarah you're a genius <laughs> sometimes, <duh>. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <sighs> so i let's let's wrap it up for tonight and uh we will see everybody in various formats very soon thanks everyone <laughs> bye. bye thanks bye. for watching